Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Tudor, Director of Vocal Activities at Shepherd University's School of Music. On behalf of my colleagues and students, I'd like to welcome you to our Mixed Ensembles concert, featuring our Jazz Ensemble, Wind Ensemble, Chamber Singers, Camerata, and Ramblers Choirs. This is the second Mixed Ensemble concert of the semester, and some of the music was selected with the spooky season in mind, and some just to lift your spirits. We are presenting our performances for free, and in lieu of tickets, we are offering viewers, you, the opportunity to donate to the School of Music through our online giving form, the link to which is found on this YouTube page. All contributions go directly to supporting our wonderful Shepherd Music students. Speaking of the School of Music YouTube page, you can find all videos previously broadcast this semester on this YouTube page. If you haven't seen the interview yet with the ensemble directors and our great friend and colleague, Christina Smith, consider checking that out. We've had a lot of positive feedback from that. It was a virtual interview held with all of us where we talked about what changes we have made and how we have dealt with this crisis since March 2020 to the present moment. And it's very, very interesting. I think that's about all I wanted to say, except thank you for your support. Thank you for coming and watching this and consider viewing the other videos if you haven't done that yet. Enjoy the concert. Welcome friends to this evening's spooktacular performance by Shepherd University's Wind Ensemble under the baton of conductor Dr. Scott Hippensteel. Ghosts by English composer Stephen McNeff is a musical fantasy in nine episodes suggested by famous ghost stories and other spectral occurrences from the British Isles. So, pull up a chair, have a listen to our whimsical ghost stories, and try not to be too scared. <laughs> Movement 1. The Haunting Movement 2, The Grey Lady, 
who left money in her will which was never paid. Disconsolately, she haunts the churchyard of St. Giles, Oxford. Movement 3. The Dog of Godley, said to be as big as a bull and able to vanish and reappear at will. Don't let it overtake you. Thank you. 
Movement 4. The Bank of England Clerk, a cashier who stood nearly eight feet tall and is reputed to have been buried inside the bank to thwart the activities of grave robbers. Movement 5. The Girl in the Tower, who, when her father forbade her marriage to a man below her status, threw herself to her death.
Movement 6. The Oldham Coliseum Ghost. Mr. Harold Norman, who was killed in a sword fight during a performance of Macbeth. <laughs> Movement 7, the Blackpool Tram, which runs up and down the seafront on stormy nights. Thank you. 
Movement 8, the Polish sailor. No one knows who he is, perhaps a shipwrecked captain, but he haunts a lonely beach at Sandwood Bay in the Highlands. Movement 9, Choral, to conclude the work and finally lay the ghosts, but perhaps they still walk. <laughs> Kirk Franklin is an American gospel musician, singer, songwriter, and choir director. He's known for leading urban contemporary gospel choirs such as The Family, God's Property, and One Nation Crew, and he's won multiple awards, including 12 Grammy Awards. This song, Wanna Be Happy, is one that I listen to 
all the time in the car. It is infectious, it is filled with joy, a terrific bass line, and great lyrics. We had a fantastic time rehearsing this. And even though we're wearing masks in the recording session, there is great joy and beaming underneath those masks as we express this and hope to share some of the joy that we experienced with you. I'm John French Wilkins, and it's my pleasure to introduce our next piece to you, La Nuit Froide et Sombre by Orlando de Lassus, or The Night, Dark and Cold. Orlando de Lassus was born in 1532 in Mont, Belgium, and died in 1594 in Munich, Bavaria. Now, unless you know something about vocal Renaissance music, I'd imagine you don't really know who Orlando de Lassus is, which is a shame. 
because I truly believe he is in the pantheon of great Western composers, if not by virtue of his prolific output. Over the course of his life, de Lassus composed over 2,000 pieces for voice, across all languages, German, Italian, Latin, and French, which this piece is in. De Lasso represents the pinnacle of the late Franco-Flemish style of composition. Now, you may be more familiar with some of the earlier Franco-Flemish composers, people such as Josquin de Pre, Guillaume Dufay, or Cipriano de Rohr. However, de Lasso's style is less medieval and more polyphonic and experimental than his earlier Flemish counterpart types. De Lasso's style is more in line with those of the late Renaissance of Italian descent, people such as Carlo Gesualdo, Claudio Monteverdi, or De Lasso's student, Giovanni Gabarelli. In the song, listen for chain suspensions, arching phrases, or some of that experimental, groovy harmonics and accidentals that hallmark the end of the Renaissance and the entrance into the Baroque era. I truly enjoyed singing this piece and making music with my colleagues again has been such a rewarding experience and working on repertoire that I enjoy makes it that much better. I hope you enjoy La Nuit Froid des Sombres. Charles Mingus was a luminary jazz composer and arranger. His blues-drenched compositions both harkened to an earlier time of jazz and also embraced the future of jazz, utilizing elements of free jazz. His pieces frequently reflected the tenor of the times, taking up uh, cultural, social, or political themes. 
Fables of Albus is one of Mingus's most overtly political works. The tune was written as a protest against Orville Faubus, uh, the then governor of Arkansas, who in 1957 ordered the National Guard to block the integration of Little Rock Central High School. The shifting grooves, uh, along with free jazz elements, helped Mingus to depict the chaos and unrest of that scene. We'll be featuring Jarrell Parker on saxophone for this tune. Please enjoy Fables of Faubus. 